Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Assimilate Inc. and I'm back again with the next lesson in our Learn Scratch tutorial series. And in this lesson, we're talking about slots. Now you might be thinking, well, Kev, we kind of covered that in a previous lesson, but we really didn't. We sort of glazed over what slots actually do and how they benefit you in your workflow inside of Scratch and how much hidden information and how much detail you can actually get in and learn about and adjust about your shots by simply working with them inside of the slots available to you. All right, so let's get rolling. And to get rolling talking about slots, we are going to need a clip to work with. Now, before I even do that, I wanna draw your attention to the left side of the screen. We've talked about this briefly in a previous lesson. You'll notice that we have two, I'll say guides. We have one that says timeline, one that says versions. We've established that once we bring clips into slots, they make up a timeline, whether that is a conform timeline whether that's a dailies timeline, it doesn't matter. Those clips are now in a timeline, but you're gonna notice that we have this other sort of guide that says versions and it's going up, pointing up. So what exactly does that mean? Well, let's get in and let's import a clip first. Sure, why not? Let's bring in this deer clip. I'm simply going to say open. I'm going to take it and drop it anywhere inside of the construct window right there. And once I do, a new slot is going to be created the clip is going to be inserted into it and we're now set to go. Now I want to draw your attention down here to the bottom of the slot where you see that we have something that says 0 colon 242. What this represents right now is 0 is the slot that the shot is currently sitting in 242 and 242 represents the clip and the slot length and that they are identical to each other. They are automatically matching the size of each other. All right. Now let's talk about versions because I think that's important for me to talk about. Now, what is a version? Well, a version is just that. A version is when you're going to get in and start color correcting, color grading, you can get in and add different versions of shots so that you'll have a bunch of different options, whether they're for you, whether they're for the producer, the director, the client, whoever. And you can easily switch back and forth between versions. Now, versions of a shot are contained within the shot's slot. So let me show you what I mean by that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to head to the color effects module. Now, we really haven't talked about this at all. And to be honest, you're just watching right now. You're just along for the ride when we talk about versions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one version that I'll call the quote unquote normal version. And I'm just going to add a couple versions in here as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select different versions and I'm just going to throw the balance off just for the sake of showing you something that looks very different from the other ones. We'll make one very blue, one very green. Let's make one very magenta too. Sure, why not? Okay, actually maybe even a little bit more aqua. There we go. Okay, so these really sort of stand out from each other. There we go. That's very nice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to the construct module. Now you're going to see how slots really come into play. They not only contain your shot, but they're going to contain all the versions of the shot. And what's important to keep in mind is that the version that is displayed when you play back your timeline will always be the bottom most version. Now, keep in mind, you can always take versions and rearrange them here if you want to, much like you can do the same thing inside of the color effects module. Simply take them, grab them, drag them and drop them in whatever order you want. And as you'll see that as I'm doing that, the display or the viewer is immediately updating to show me what the current version of the shot is that I am looking at. All right, now we're gonna save the color effects module for a few, I'll say a few tutorials down the road, but I wanted to show you versions so that you understand exactly the power of slots. This is a very simple way now to get in, get a visual representation of exactly what is going on with any given shot, all right? Let's talk now about other things that you can do inside of your slots. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select these three versions by holding Command or Control on the keyboard. I'm simply going to delete them because I don't need them anymore. Now, we did talk about adding notes. Now, adding notes is not necessarily unique to a slot. It's more so unique to the clip. A couple ways that we can get in and add shot notes. One, we can select the shot, simply navigate down here to where we can say, uh, you know, enter whatever note we want. We can add it onto the shot just like that. Or what we can do very quickly and very easily is you're going to notice that we have this little icon here in the upper right hand corner of the shot. I can simply click on it. This is actually going to bring the notes to the forefront and I can type in this is a great shot of deer that are probably not deer. 
All right, now once I actually put that in there, you'll see there's the note all set to go and we can add multiple notes, however many we might need on a given shot. Now what I'm gonna do just for the sake of keeping things nice and neat is I'm actually just gonna remove this note just so it's a little bit easier to see the slot again. So now let's take this one step further. We've got some information happening here in the upper left, the upper right, the lower left, and the lower right. So what does this information pertain to? Well, much like we talked about when we started the lesson, 242 represents how many frames are in this shot. Okay? Lower left-hand corner, the name of the shot. Upper left-hand corner, the time code. And you're going to notice that we have something in the upper right-hand corner beside the zero. The zero represents the current frame that we're sitting on. But what do those four bars represent? Well, the four bars represent the shot or the version's barcode. Now, what the heck is a barcode? Well, again, much like a lot of things inside of Scratch, this is a very visual way to figure out exactly what has been applied to a shot that you happen to be working on. So let me give you an example. You'll see the very first bar in here is grayed out. Well, they're actually all grayed out. What I'm going to do is jump down to color effects. And what we're going to do is head to the primary correction. And it doesn't matter what I do in here. I'm simply just going to grab the color and just sort of go crazy with it like such. Now, as soon as I do that, I'm going to head back to the Construct module, and you're now going to notice that one of those bars is highlighted. What that's telling me is that a primary change has been made to the shot. So again, this is a very visual way for you to figure out exactly what is happening with any given shot at any given time. And keep in mind, this is not just in the Construct module. If we were to head to the Edit module and head into our layers, if we were to add a layer, we'd be able to see the layer barcode as well. All right, now something else that I want to draw your attention to. If you look very closely, we got a little bit of an Easter egg on the color effects module screen. And you'll notice that if I come right down here, you can see that we actually have another barcode located right here. So, of course, this does beg the question, do all of these barcodes represent the same information? And the answer is no. Two of them do, but one of them does not. The two that represent the same information are the ones that you find in the construct module actually attached to the clip in a slot, and the one that you'll find over here in the color effects module at the bottom of the viewport. Now, the one that's actually on a layer, the one that's attached to a layer represents something different. So let's break it down. The barcode that you see that's actually attached to a clip or a version in a slot in the construct module or at the bottom of the viewport represents a primary grade for bar one, secondary grade for bar two, a shape or canvas for bar three, and a framing adjustment for bar four. Now, the barcode that's actually attached to a layer that we bring out from the left-hand side of the screen, that barcode, bar one, represents a primary grade, bar two represents a secondary grade, bar three represents a shape or canvas, and bar four represents any qualifiers, fill, or mats attached to that layer. Now again, I'm just going to head back to color effects. We're gonna to head to primary. I'm just going to reset this back. You'll notice if I jump back to the construct module, of course, that is now gone. And let's now talk about how we can actually preview inside of the construct module, because as of this point, what we've been doing is we've been selecting a shot, we've been clicking on it, we've been heading into the, whether it's the edit module or the color effects module, we've been clicking and dragging through. But we can actually preview right from the construct window as well by simply grabbing the bar across the top and just dragging. Now you're gonna notice that not only does our time code update, but the frame number updates as well. We can just place this wherever we want to place this. However, keep in mind that if I was to place it, let's just say roughly five seconds here, and I was to jump over to the edit module, you'll notice that I am still at the first frame. This is strictly only for previewing this inside of the construct module. Now, let's take this one step further. You'll see down at the bottom, we have the information that we just talked about. But to be honest, I find that a little bit annoying, and I really would rather have different information there no problem. What we can always do is navigate right down here to the lower right hand corner and open the user preferences. You'll see the shortcut shift and U on the keyboard. I'm just going to take the user preferences. We'll bring it a little bit closer here over to the slot just so that you can see that what we can do is come right down here to the slot info. You'll see right now it's set to be the slot slash lengths. Okay, and you'll see right here it tells me this is the information label at the bottom of the slot. 
I can actually change this to be whatever I want it to be. I could have it be time code if I wanted it to be. I could have it be, you know, the record time code, the, you know, times, names, whatever I needed it to be. In a lot of cases, I either have it as time code or I just have it as nothing. Again, completely personal preference, completely up to you, however you want to have it laid out. Now, for me, what I'm going to do for the purposes of this course is I'm just going to leave it on its default just so this way my interface will always look like your interface. Now, let's take this concept again one step further. I want to get in and start adjusting shot parameters. Now you might think that, okay, well we talked about the media browser, so maybe what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the media browser and start changing information here. We could do that, or what I could do is simply say, okay, I could then head back to my shot here, right down to the bottom. I'm simply going to click on that bottom bar and you'll now see how much detail we can actually get in and adjust right here. Like for example, my color space is actually wrong on this shot. So I can set it to be Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 right there. I could get in and I can switch the time code, set the time code to be whatever I needed it to be. And more importantly, what I can also do here, let's actually just get in and clear this out here is I can actually come in and get access to the extended metadata for this shot right here. So this obviously saves me from having to go over to the right hand side to the metadata window to get access to that extended metadata that you can find right here at the bottom of the metadata window. Now one last thing that I do want to point out, and I'm not going to go too much more into slots here because we are going to talk a little bit more about slots coming up in our next lesson where we talk about conforming using scene detection. But what I want to do, and you'll notice that I just adjusted the length of this shot in my timeline. You'll notice if I come back to the construct window, what I'm being told is that this shot is now 171 frames of a 242 frame container. Okay, so I like this because you can actually see it visually exactly what is going on and how that's being updated over here. You'll also notice that now the shot does not automatically fit inside the slot. It now manually fits inside the slot because I can get in and make adjustments. All right, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come back in. I'm just going to import a different shot. Doesn't matter which one. Let's just take this one. We'll drop it in right here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to come to about here. We will delete that. Yes, because what I would like to do at this point is simply add a transition. So all I'm going to do is navigate over here to add a dissolve in. And the reason I wanted to show you that right at the end of this lesson is that if I head back to the construct module, you'll now see that we have a transition showing me that there is a dissolve or a transition in between these two shots right here. Okay, so I think that's a good place to wrap this lesson up in our introductory look at slots. Now, of course, as we go, we're going to be talking more about slots, other things that we can do in there. But I think this is a good primer to get you going so that you can see all the different things you can do. And let's now move on and talk about conforming using scene detection in our next lesson. All right, I want to thank you for watching this great lesson on learning Assimilate Scratch. Now, don't forget to check us out on our different social channels. And if you missed our last lesson, you can simply click on it right here on the screen in front of you. Don't forget as well to hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, you can always send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com.